Hey babies, it's your girl Asia Nay, and I am here with City, the one and only. Here you, y'all go subscribe to my girl's channel. Please subscribe. She's a YouTuber just like me, baby. I'm getting back into it, but you know, <laughs> just give me some time. I'll, I'll be back for real. Yes. Okay. So y'all know what it is. Today is Wind Down Wednesday. Hey. We got our yes. drinks going. Mm. Had to do a quick little sip. <sighs> so today's video, we are drinking the Black Stella Rosa. Okay. Sponsor us, baby. <laughs> y'all, let's see how the Stella Rosa make your girl feel. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> we we gonna see. We gonna see. <laughs> <laughs> all right we barely get started so y'all i wanted today to be a little juicy we starting off with the with the punches okay so y'all sit back get your wine going because it's up so yeah. well let's talk about sex <laughs> Hey, sex, baby. baby. Hey, let's talk about hey, you and me hey. okay anyway <laughs> So we're gonna start off a little easy. So when did you lose your virginity? Oh my god. Um I lost my virginity when I was 18. So I was legal. The evil twin! Okay, so I was 18 <laughs> and um I had just graduated. I'm gonna keep it short, but I just graduated high school and he was a year older than me. And I basically just hit him up and was like, hey, like, I don't wanna go to college a virgin. Can you take my virginity? And he was like, pull up. It being super painful afterwards. It was not good at all. I didn't understand the hype. So I kept doing it. <laughs> but, oh my gosh. But yeah, that was my first experience. What about you? So me, I lost my virginity at 18 as well. Mine was a little bit before prom. And it's crazy because I had the same theory in my head. I didn't want to go to college a virgin because yeah. like I had this whole bad conception behind sex. And I was like, people say you get extra crazy and attached to the people you lose it to and women be doing crazy stuff. And mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want to be like that. Not at college. Like I'm supposed to be mature. Right. And so I was like, well, I guess it's time. Right. But that's such an, a wrong way to go about it. That's terrible. Not, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. so terrible. Looking back now, I would have completely done things differently. I would have waited until I genuinely found somebody that I thought was worthy because I didn't think about that. I just was like, oh, let me hurry up and do it before I go to college. I don't want to go to college and seem unexperienced. I didn't want to. I didn't want to look like I didn't know what I was talking about. But a lot of people didn't know what they was talking about, and some people still don't. So. Still don't. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, like that was just that, was, bad that was a bad theory. Yeah, bad theory. Okay, so. Speaking of your first, did you feel attached to your first? Uh, I want to say when it was first going, I was attached just because I was so used to experimenting with him and we, we did keep doing it and trying it and trying it. Um, so at the beginning, I was very attached, but once I started to explore and see what was more out there, I got less and less attached. And also, he wasn't, I remember him not being very emotional towards mm -hmm. me anyways like that. It was just like, we're doing the act of sex okay bye like it wasn't i didn't feel like an actual emotional connection really happening um so now no but at the very beginning yeah a little bit just a little so for me like uh same a little like at the beginning when i still was in high school mm -hmm. i was but once i went away to college <laughs> the distance and then finding like <laughs> having that new person oh, <laughs> introduce me to some new things i was like oh this is what this really mm -hmm. hitting for and so I was just like, yeah. not attached. All right, so this next question is, why do men want head, but don't want to give it? Mm. So what do you think about that? Like some men do, mm. there are some men out there that does, but like, yes. I'm just saying, what if, what if you come across a guy who like wants you to give him like mm -hmm. fellatio right. all the time, but right. doesn't want to do it with you? And that's the thing. I've heard guys say, like, oh, well, I mean, the vagina is different. It's closed. So everything is inside. It's closed all day. But it's like, well, I mean, even if I wipe down, I mean, 
I can still be clean, but regardless, you got yours touching your legs all day, pressing against your body. So it really doesn't, like the heat and all that doesn't matter. Like if you're clean for sex and if you both are giving oral, I think it's okay to, if you want to sniff or look at somebody's genitals before you give them oral, I don't think it's anything wrong with that. People think it's so weird to be like, let me see your, like, let me see what it's, and it's like, and from there, if they want to do that, they can't. Because like, if you could be in it, then why can't you eat it? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Oh, God. But anyway. Oh, this is real <laughs> spicy. This is real. I got to drink yeah, again. It is. I have come across many different men. Um, and it's always been, they immediately whip it out and try to just, for. there's no questioning. There's no, can you do this? It's, it's usually just... It's, it, it, it is expected for me to do that. And that's that's what I don't like. That's that double standards exactly. type of thing. Like women exactly. should give their all all the time. And then mm -hmm. it's like that's expected for a woman to, to do those do types of submit. things. But not yeah. get, it, get like receive it. Yeah. So, yeah, that just sucks. I, I feel like um, that's where communication is important when it comes to sex mm -hmm. or whatever. You can have that conversation with your partner and if they feel like they're not comfortable with giving right. then you don't have to give either so nobody right. doesn't have to give right if that's not what either one of you are comfortable with right sex is all about comfortability so if you're not comfortable don't do anything during sex that you're not comfortable with and it's good to have a conversation beforehand Absolutely. about boundaries when it comes to dating what do you think a date is like what is a date mm. This is a good one. Mm -hmm. This is a good one. Mm -hmm. It can go so many different ways. Now, in our generation, now the technology is different. It can go so many different ways. Um, but to me, I'm an old head when it comes to love. A classic date to me is saying, would you like to go to dinner with me? Would you like to have lunch? Would you like to have brunch? Would you like to have breakfast with me? Meet me at this place? And I'll see you at that time. Like, look nice. Like, to me, a date is when you're getting ready, when you're about to present yourself to someone that you are, you know, are flattered by or interested in like that and want to meet with them socially. Like, something that you take serious when you have to put in effort to show somebody you want to be with them. To me, that is a date. And for me, same as well. Like, I want to go out somewhere. Like, this is my first time meeting you. I don't want to go to your house. I don't want to link up with you and smoke in your car. I don't want to Netflix and chill. I don't know you, baby. I don't know you. And I don't want you coming to my house either. Like, And if you don't have the money, say I don't have the money. Maybe I will but there's take also, care of my meal. You can take care sorry, of yours. To cut you off. No, ahead, to me, ahead. that's an excuse. Yeah. There are so many things out here in this world that's free that you can do. We can go out to a park and just go paint. And you could bring a good old bottle of this. Right. And we could be outside and we could paint and get to know each other in public. Yeah, people are at a park. being crafty. Or, exactly. Or they that. have museums. That's free. Yeah. Like, there are so many free things out here that you don't have to spend money on. Like Exactly. But everybody just wants to Netflix and chill and get me in your room. Like, and link up. Everybody want to link up. Like, no. Like, what is that? No, yeah, I'm sorry, baby. I'm grown. You got to take me on a date. And it's like, we can do all that once we're official. Like, yes. We don't like, have to when, you're my, when you're my boyfriend or if we're like exclusive or like we already had our first dates and we're like over all of that stuff mm -hmm. and I'm like more comfortable with you. Yeah, we can Netflix and chill at your house. I can come right. over there. You can come over here. We can have like wine nights at each other's house exactly. and cook yeah. and stuff like that. But when I first meet you, I don't want my first outing with you to be in such an intimate setting. Yes. Because there's so many bad things can happen. So many bad things. And I feel like just because the setting is so enclosed, it's very hard to not make it something sexual. When you're up against somebody you just met, you're attracted to each other, everything is new, it's fresh, and y'all are together in a confined small space it is kind of hard to not think about sex yeah like you can then, not act on it but exactly. I feel like just, it's still kind of there and people can feel pressure and that's when a lot of sadly uncomfortable things can conspire and the whole non-consensual things can happen yeah, that's a. and I just feel like that's a setup for a lot of those things to happen so i feel like it's best to like get to know each other in a public setting first mm -hmm. before you do something intimate i agree on a date baby for real what's up baby take me out to dinner <laughs> <laughs> you believe in the 90 day rule 
I do not believe in a 90 day rule. I'm sorry. To me, it really is a chemistry thing. Like, of course, I, I don't plan on doing it on the first time we met. So the first time we meet, maybe the first few times we meet, probably not. But it just depends on the setting. It depends on the energy, the vibe. Everything just depends on everything. Um, but I'm, I'm not saying I'm like quick to DTF. But I'm also not saying I'm going to make you wait like three plus months until you're able to touch me. Like, so no, it's to me, it's just if the vibes is right. If the vibes is right and I feel comfortable, if I feel good, then yeah, I'll go for it. With me, um, I don't necessarily fully believe in the 90 day rule, of course. Yeah. Your body, your choice. But like you said, if the vibes are right, yeah. but definitely not on the first date, like my first time getting to know you. But honestly, if we get into like the stage of we're going to go on a date, we have probably already been talking to each other for months before the actual first link up. And I also feel like a lot of the times people put the pressure on the 90 day rule because it's like, if you give it up too fast, he's going to leave. He's not going to want to be with and you. And that don't matter, baby. Because they like right. to chase. You can get left at any time. Right. You like, they like to chase and that's what a man want. But honestly, if you that guy and that's all you wanted in the first place, it don't matter if a woman gives it to you on day one or day 90. If you was going to leave, you're going to leave regardless because exactly. you finally got what you wanted. Exactly. If that's all that you wanted. Exactly. So, I say, sis, if you like this guy... And you feeling him, the vibes are right. If you want, yeah, play, get you some play. Do like, it, wrap it up. Be, yeah, safe, be safe, y'all. Be safe out here. Thing, though, like, be safe. For real. So we're gonna switch it back and get back on to the relationship aspect of talking to someone. So let's say you're in a relationship. I just want to know, like, does religion matter? Uh, personally. Oh, okay. So, personally, religion doesn't really matter to me in a sense. But I want you to, I want you, you don't have to believe in the same God that I do, but I want you to believe in something. Believe in something? In something. I mean, you have to believe, you have to at least be spiritual. Like, that's the bare minimum. If you don't believe in anything and you just live in here and you don't think you have a purpose, you don't think there was anything before that, then for me, that's, Probably not going to work. That's a red flag for me. Um, but, you know, you don't have to. Um, you don't have to be the same religion as me. Would I convert for somebody that I love? Yes, if we are getting married. But with me, this is finally something that we disagree on. Because throughout the podcast, we've been agreeing yeah. on everything. So, yeah. I have a different view on that. For okay. me, like, I, I would like my significant other to be the same religion as me okay because i don't know i think of longevity and i think of mm. marriage when i'm like dating someone yeah. and children and i feel like my whole family everyone around me we're all christian we're all baptist and i feel like when i have my children i want them to grow up like how i grew up and okay. have the same traditions and holidays and stuff that i celebrated as a kid so yeah. when i look for my spouse i want him to be the same religion as me and I'm deep in my faith, so I, I don't want to convert. You don't have to battle. Yeah, I don't want to have to battle about that. Like, mm -hmm. you're not understanding my feelings because you mm -hmm. don't have the same religion as me and you don't understand how deep it is to me and how important it is to me. I completely and understand I don't want to have an argument over, over what to do with our children. Yeah. I definitely understand your viewpoint of believing in the same thing because believing in something um, is going to cause conflict sometimes in a relationship. It is going to be differences, for sure. There's things I'm going to have to learn about them, they're going to have to learn about me, and then, okay, now what do we want to do with our kids? What do we want to do with our family? So I definitely understand that viewpoint. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Yo, the wand is hitting. The wand kind of getting to her. Yeah, I, don't I don't know, y'all. Like okay, so for me, Stella Rosa is not strong enough. I don't know if I should have said that, but... <laughs> I don't know. Like, this is not really doing... We well, lost our sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> we got on the topic of religion. Um, a lot of people, when it comes to religion, like Christianity, we believe in, like, you have to wait um, to be married before you have sex because sex is very, like, soul tying yeah. and things like that. With that being said, do you believe in soul ties? 
absolutely i absolutely believe in soul ties um whenever this is just me personally whenever i sleep with people um they say that the eyes are the are the gate to the soul um and for me making that type of I, I don't always make deep eye connections some people are making eye connection literally terrifies them so they can't do it to me but for the ones that can and we're like staring in each other's eyes and the act like um it is it is a soul tie type of thing i feel like um and maybe i could be over exaggerating but i feel like i can read their body i can tell if somebody is hiding during sex, I can tell somebody is hiding. Like, if they, what do you mean? If they're holding back? Yeah, I can tell okay. if they're holding back, if they're um, hiding, if they're, like, insecure and afraid to, like, look me in my eyes. Um, I can tell somebody really likes me, but they don't want to say it, but their body can say it. Um, so there's just, there's just so many different types of communication that's happening that's what's being said versus what's not being said versus what we feel in the moment. Um, so I definitely absolutely believe in soul ties. For me, it's like a half and half. Like I kind of do, but I kind of don't. Cause like what confuses me. So do people say like it's soul ties with every single person you see? I think with? that's what people say. I and that's think, just I don't think what I don't every, believe. Yeah, it's I don't just every, certain people yeah, that like. That you probably keep going back to you. <laughs> that you developed. <laughs> yeah. Like certain, certain people. Um, <laughs> Um, I feel like certain people you have a deeper connection with yeah. and like the ones that you really got to know like through and through like person that you will be on FaceTime with like texting like no matter what time could go by like months can go by right. y'all still so come much back. time could go by but you'll find yourself like hey how you doing boo right Where and some doing? people you may not feel like you have a soul tie with and they feel like they have one with you Ooh. I noticed that with some people. Some people, I'm like, why do they keep coming back? I really didn't like this person. And they like, no, I like you. You rock my world. I'm going to oh, keep God. coming. And I'm ah. like, oh, my God. Like, it's I don't feel high. like that about you. And I feel bad. It's like, dang it. It's only a few people I ever felt like I can't leave them alone. I also feel like um, that's why God wanted us to wait. I understand yeah, it. Yeah, I get it. I understand it 100% because sometimes, like, Sex can make people do some crazy things, and it's confusing. Oh, it it just makes things it's very confusing because that's the closest you can be to another human is sex. So mm -hmm. to be that close to somebody and you not actually in a relationship, be serious with and be them. Like, it can hurt you. Yeah, it can make you feel bad. It can make you feel empty. It can make you feel confused. It can make you feel like, dang, why am I going through this? Why do I feel like that about that? And then the root of it all is the fact that you out here having sex and soul ties with so many different people. Exactly. And that's exactly what it is. And also, like, you have to be very, very careful with who you choose to sleep with because the emotions of the person that you sleep with can come onto you. So let's yes. say that you're talking to some guy, right? And he's, like, very down. Like, he kind of has, like, something going on. He's a little depressed or whatever. You have sex with that guy. Now you find yourself feeling droopy and drowsy when you wake up and depressed. And you're like, why am I feeling like this? Absolutely. That's because with sex, you take on the emotion of the person that you sleep with. That's just what yeah. I think. So I be feeling like if you're not, when I'm not in a good headspace yeah. or I'm not feeling okay, I don't want to be intimate because yeah. I don't want to, like, put my energy onto From someone else. else. And, I, and I've had those moments where, like, I feel so bad, but I feel like, oh, well, if I have sex, that will make me feel better. But so that's because you took someone else's exactly, energy. Literally. So I go have sex with that <laughs> person, and I'm like, oh, I feel good. Yeah, you took away their Yeah, little... but later on, a few days later, I'm right back to zero again. I'm mm. right back to my depression. I'm right back to that issue I was going through. So it's like, it's like a temporary high. It's a drug. It's mm -hmm. a drug. Sex is literally a drug. What do you think cheating is? Okay, so what do I think cheating is? I feel like cheating is anything that you don't want your other partner to know. Like, if anything you're hiding. It make you feel bad or yeah, scary. Yeah, like nervous. anything that you're hiding from your other partner is cheating. Yeah. So, that could be like, um, let's say it doesn't always have to be sex. Like, let's say you're yeah. talking to like an old ex or something but you don't want your partner to know it could be completely friendly but the fact that you're hiding that you're talking yeah, to that person and that's cheating yeah 
Okay. Yeah. Like that. anything that you're keeping a secret from your significant other is cheating. It doesn't always have to be sexual acts. Um. Yeah. Emotional cheating. Yes. I I want to piggyback off of that because um you could be doing it and you because it's like you could be doing it just talking to somebody casually and then it starts to build and start to grow and it's like oh I think I. I think I like this person. I think I have, like, I, I may not want my spouse to know about that. Like, I think that, that is, you know. Like, do you feel like real love still exists? Like, the love that maybe, like, our parents had or, like, from the 90s? Like, oh, gosh, she said, let's, you know what? <laughs> let's drink to this one, because. I don't know, y'all. I be trying not to lose hope in your it's love. It's really a sick, sad world out here. Like, <laughs> now I'm gonna cry on camera. Oh, <laughs> Everything hit not me. Not the Kim K cry. I know. <laughs> they feel bad. You don't think I feel bad? But um, yeah, I just um, it's deep down, I am a hopeless romantic. Me too. I I'm a to hopeless like romantic. I, I know. I, I feel like I act like I'm not because I because we have to because we have to. It's hard. Like. You keep meeting people over and over and over again, and nothing happens. It's we start having sex, or you no, know, it's like we talk, we flirt. It's hot and spicy. We in a cupcake phase. We start having sex. We hang out a little bit. We talk. We stop. That's it. You pop I back up every like, now and then. I feel like a too. A lot of times too, like the guys would be like, "Well, I want a um an open relationship." Yeah. A lot of guys say things like, "Oh yes, I want to be in an open relationship." Um, I, I can be your boyfriend, but I want multiple girlfriends or whatever. And then if you agree to that, but they be like, you can't date no other man. And if yeah. I find out you date another man, it's over and I don't want to talk and to you. And at that point, I could just tell you what you want to hear, but I'm still going to live my life. Oh. <laughs> like, I can tell a nigga what they want to oh, hear. No. But oh, it's no. like, do you want to deal with somebody who met your match? Or do you want to deal with somebody who genuinely wants to be monogamous in a relationship with you? I... I would love to be in a monogamous, oh, this is going to sound bad. I would love to be in a monogamous relationship, but I'm so used to dating around. I don't, I don't even know if I know how to be in a monogamous relationship anymore. Like, I'm just so afraid of titles. Like, oh, you need to show me some before I know if I want to claim you. Bro, you said that deep in your soul. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Bro, not a target. Bro, she's coming from somewhere right now. I'm coming from my real life, guys. Sorry. Um, oh but no, world. like a lot of people in our generation are afraid of titles and it's very sad. Like sad. people are, it, they feel like it's bad to have feelings. A lot of people yeah, feel like, like oh joke, no, like, weak. oh, you have feelings. Yeah. You're lame. You're weak. Well, why do you have feelings? I don't know if it's like just the media and the things that we're exposed to in our generation yes. that paints the picture. Yeah. Oh, neighbors, this is the end of our wind down Wednesday segment. Mm. But y'all, Stella, let's rate her. Um, Thank gone. you, Stella. Gone. <laughs> the whole bottle. Shout out to Stella. I don't know. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel pretty good. I can't lie. One to ten. I'm feeling like a six. A six? Mm-hmm. <sighs> feel a four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay, though. Uh, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next Wednesday. Bye. Bye, y'all.